When I was originally planning this video, the title was supposed to be something like, when should you have water for optimal health and digestion and weight loss? Something like that. But now the title of the video is gonna be more like, how to use water to lose weight. Because while I was doing the research for the first one, I found some mind blowing studies that were really crazy that I'm very excited to share with you on how you can use water to lose weight. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about three main things. The first is how water affects how much you eat in the next meal. The second is how water actually affects how you lose weight over time, like how much you lose. And then the third is who this is gonna work best for and why it works and the most mind blowing stuff. So keep on watching if you wanna know all about this craziness. And first, at least four studies have looked at how drinking water before a meal changes how much you actually eat during that meal. And so for one example, researchers had participants drink 500 milliliters of water, which is about a pint before a meal, exactly one minute before the meal to be precise, and looked at how much they ate in that meal. So they had half the participants drink a pint of water a minute before the meal and half the participants didn't. And they found that the people who drank water ate 470 calories in that next meal, whereas the people who weren't given this water beforehand ate 610 calories. So the people who weren't drinking a pint of water before the meal ate 30% more than the people who drank a pint of water right before the meal. And another study looked at how drinking a pint of water 30 minutes before a meal affected how much people ate and this was for breakfast specifically, and they found that people who drink water ate 13% less than people who did not drink water before that meal. And I just wanna note that all the participants were allowed to drink water during the meal, so they weren't like deprived of water. It's just that the water group people were kind of forced to drink 500 milliliters of water before that meal. And in these studies, they didn't just eat fewer calories, they also reported feeling more satisfied and less hungry and having a lower appetite after that meal. So drinking water before a meal actually made people feel less hungry and more satisfied and fulfilled, even though they ate less at the meal. So that means for fewer calories, people are getting more satisfaction and fullness. And you may be asking, well, what about long-term? Like just because someone eats less in the next meal doesn't mean that's gonna make them lose weight. Because for example, by the time people get to the next meal, like lunch, their bodies might be like, you're not fooling me this time. I know you ate hardly any calories for breakfast. I'm gonna eat a little more to make up for that because you can't trick me with water. So at least one study has looked at how adding water to people's diets actually affects their weight loss over time. And in this study, they had 50 people, which is a lot for this kind of study. I am very impressed. And they put them on a diet for 12 weeks and they had half of them drink 500 milliliters of water before each meal, and the other half didn't have to do that. They were the control condition. And they looked at how drinking water before each meal affected their weight over this 12-week diet. And they found that people who drank 500 milliliters of water before each meal lost almost five pounds more than the people who did not drink the water before each meal. And both of these groups were put on a diet they were both restricting their calories, which I do not recommend. Please check out any of my other videos, pretty much. Don't do that for long-term weight loss. But in the study, they found that the people who drank water lost a lot more weight. And specifically, the people who drank water before each meal lost almost 50% more weight than the people who didn't. Those are gigantic whopping effects. Those are really crazy. But that's not even the mind-blowing part, though. So I'll get into that in a little bit. But before I get to the most mind-blowing stuff, I wanna take a little intermission to talk about who this is gonna be best for, like who this is gonna work best for. So the researchers in these studies, there's a general consensus among them that the big reason why drinking water before a meal makes people eat less and lose weight is the pretty obvious one in that they're less hungry because their stomachs are fuller. So this method will work best for people who are volume eaters. And if you don't already know whether or not you're a volume eater, you can kind of guess if you find that you are equally full after the same amount of fries as salad. So if you feel just as full eating three cups of fries as you do three cups of salad, that isn't like super high calorie salad, then chances are you're a volume eater and you use your stomach fullness to determine how much food you need to eat. And if you are one of those people, then so far the methods I've told you about with using water will probably work pretty well. I hate to use the word method because I feel like people should just hydrate anyway. So if you are a volume eater, then this whole water drinking thing, at least what I've told you about so far, will probably work best for you. 
On the other hand, if you're more like me, where you don't really eat according to volume and you instead kind of detect how many calories are in something and your body just naturally like modulates its eating accordingly, then this might not work as well. Another reason why this probably works, which will affect everyone, regardless of whether or not you're a volume eater, is that a lot of people mistake thirst for hunger. So people will often feel thirsty and then end up eating <laughs> instead of drinking because it's kind of hard to tell a lot of the time when we're thirsty rather than hungry and our body tries to get the water from food. So often we'll end up having an appetite for food instead of water when really what we wanted was water. So if you end up drinking more water, then you're less likely to overeat as a result of dehydration. So in that sense, drinking water can work for everyone. And then another reason why it can work, not just for volume eaters, is this last mind-blowing bit. And I want to add this disclaimer starting here. Drinking too much water can kill you. Please don't go and drink just massive quantities of water as a result of this video. <laughs> Please don't do that. Um, the maximum you should have per hour is 0.8 liters. Do not go over that amount, like on average throughout the day. And definitely don't go above 20 liters a day. That's five gallons, so that'd be pretty crazy. So please don't go crazy drinking a bunch of water. At the end of this video, I will tell you like the optimal amount of water to drink to get your weight loss effects without drowning your organs. What made me go down the rabbit hole of finding these last few studies I'm gonna tell you about is in the, the last study I just talked about with the 12-week diet. They did a test at the end of the 12 weeks where they had everyone do a meal with water before and then another time they did a meal without any water before. And the really interesting thing is that the people who were in the water drinking group who had 500 milliliters of water before every meal actually didn't end up eating more when they did have a meal without any water before it. So even though they've been drinking water before every single meal for 12 weeks, when the researchers came and tested them on a waterless meal, so meal without that 500 milliliters of water, they didn't end up eating more than they did with a meal that had the water before it. So it looks like something else might be happening here where it's not just that people are losing weight because they're eating less in the next meal. Because these people who lost almost five more pounds were not actually eating less anymore when they drank water before the meal. Now that could be because they're just generally used to eating less now, so it means that they still get like, they're trained by the water to eat less in the meals, or maybe they ended up compensating and eating more even after water. And so that made me think, hmm, it seems like there's something else going on here besides just water filling up people's stomachs or helping with dehydration. And I found a couple of studies showing the same thing. So I'm gonna go over one of them just so I can go over the specific numbers from it. They found that drinking 500 milliliters of water, same number that keeps appearing everywhere, actually increased people's metabolic rate by 30%. That is insane, I feel like. And this effect started 10 minutes after drinking water and it peaked and reached its maximum calorie burning rate around 30 to 40 minutes after drinking the water. So all they had people do was drink some water, they measured how many calories they burned, and the researchers found that people burned 30% more calories just from drinking a pint of water. That's all they did. And in total from that 500 milliliters of water, the researchers found that people burned an extra 25 calories just from drinking the water. Now, 25 calories may sound kind of small, like who cares, especially because we know calories in versus calories out. It doesn't really matter that much for weight loss in the long term. But for people who do subscribe to CISO or the theory, then this will probably blow your mind. If you add up the calories, then if you were to drink three liters of water a day, which is the recommended amount for women, then you would be burning an extra 150 calories a day just from drinking water. And that means that in a month, you would lose almost a pound and a half of fat just from drinking water, like just from the calories burned from drinking water. And how many calories you burn is actually gonna depend on what type of water you drink. So they found that about half of the calories burned from drinking water was due to having to warm the water up to your body temperature because you have to burn calories to generate heat. And so that means cold water is gonna be better. You're gonna burn more calories if you drink cold water. And secondly, this does not work as well for salt water. It has to be pure water. And based on the science, I can't speak to sodas and juices and whatnot. I think pure water is gonna be your best bet because the researchers who've done studies on this think that probably about half of your calories burned are coming from osmotic processes, which to put in simple terms has to do with how much salt is in the water versus your body and other ions. Um, 
And so it seems like getting the levels the same between the water in your stomach and your blood and whatnot actually burns some calories, which is pretty cool. And so the question is, how much should you drink? You may be thinking, well, the more water, the better, right? Like I should just drink as much as I can possibly fit in my stomach. But no, there is a sweet spot here because drinking too much water could backfire. For example, if you drink so much before a meal that you're already full when you start the meal, then literally all you're doing is stretching out your stomach. And that's just gonna make you overeat more over time. And so you wanna have a sweet spot where you're drinking enough water to get some of these fullness benefits, but not drinking so much that you have to overeat past fullness in order to get enough calories. Because you wanna make sure you're still getting enough calories for all your needs for the day from your meals. You just wanna use the water to help you avoid overeating is how I would think of it. Don't try to use water to make yourself hardly eat because that's just gonna backfire and stretch your stomach out potentially, or if not, it could lead to binges because you do not wanna be chronically under eating. Like you just wanna be not overeating, maybe just slightly, slightly below maintenance in order to lose weight and keep it off long-term. And for specific numbers, if you are a woman or a smaller person, I recommend around three liters. And if you're a man or on the larger side, I recommend between three and four, maybe closer to four. And I think that will have a major effect on your hydration status and your health and your weight if you don't already drink that much. I just want to reiterate, please do not go and drink just tons of water. You could literally drown your organs. Like, please don't go over the recommended amounts. Just keep it under 20 liters a day, which would just be an insane amount of water, honestly, unless you have a medical condition that requires drinking that much. And keep it under 0.8 liters or 800 milliliters an hour. So do not drink more than 800 milliliters an hour on average. And so I hope this video can convince you to stay hydrated and that weight loss is about a lot more than just cutting out your favorite foods or going on a diet or doing all that stuff that most people will recommend. Weight loss can be as simple as doing healthy behaviors like going for walks and drinking more water. <laughs> and that can actually make big sustainable changes in your life that are just from adopting healthier habits. So I hope you liked this video, and if you haven't already subscribed, please do to keep up on my healthy weight loss hacks that are actually just about living a happier, healthier life and not torturing yourself to lose weight. And please like and share if you liked it. It really makes a big difference for me, and I really appreciate you guys' support. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time.